Hello, today is April 28th, and today we're going to be reading our gospel lesson for this coming Sunday, uh, the third Sunday of Easter. Our gospel for this Sunday is John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, do you have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Our gospel this week is, in a sense, Jesus' final word, at least in John, to Peter. And we can read this text both as Jesus' uh, final word of teaching, to those disciples there on the shore uh, and as Peter's final note of redemption in the John narrative. Now, in Luke Acts, the two books that are accompany that accompany one another, Peter, we we go and we we follow Peter after the resurrection. Oh, quite a ways. Um, years of, of, of preaching and teaching and visions that have happened to Peter. But here in John, here in John's gospel, we get a final word about what happens to Peter. And in John's gospel, Peter has his threefold denial of Jesus on the night in which he was arrested. And Peter says three times before the cock crows twice, I do not know who he is, that Peter claims he has no connection to Jesus. And so here you have in this, you, you, it might have been, if you are familiar with that story, this story is meant to bring up that, that previous 
fault of Peter, that previous failure of Peter to stand by Jesus. And so, yes, you can hear, you can hear the redemption for Peter in telling Jesus, yes, yes, I love you. Yes, you are, you are the one who I choose. And so you have, in a sense, um, Peter redeem, Peter coming back from the lowest depths, um, that Jesus, by, by coming back to Peter, um, by giving him this second chance, is offering redemption. And so it's a fantastic moment for Peter, the character. But it is also, uh, it also points to, even in this, in this moment, it points to Peter's imperfection and the imperfection of the church. We, you should also hear in this story something similar to a story we read, uh, well, now a few months ago or a couple of months ago, I believe in February. We were reading the story in Luke 5 of the disciples fishing and failing at fishing and Jesus saying, why don't you try on this side of the boat? And that's in the Luke story. And in that same story, Jesus tells them they will be fishers of men. Pretty well known. And the verb for fishing here used in Luke 5 is the same as used in John. They're the disciples' failure on their own and their extreme success after, Jesus, after following Jesus' instructions um, is John's is in some way John's version of Luke's story. Um, not to say that they are the same thing in totally different order, but they are John's version of that same thematic idea. And the 153 fish, there's a lot of different meanings that came up in a Bible study I had earlier this week as to the the exact meaning of the number 100. 53, um, a lot of intriguing possibilities. There were a, apparently 153,000 builders of the Temple of Solomon. Um, that that's an interesting that's an interesting connection. Um, but generally, the idea is the future of the church, the future of these disciples, is that suddenly they are going to have an enormous community that springs up in the wake of Jesus's resurrection. And so Jesus, knowing this, turns to Peter, turns to the one who has been the leader of the disciples this whole time, turns to the one who will be their leader in the time to come after Jesus has ascended and left them behind. And Jesus, knowing that things are not that this life is not going to be easy he wants to impress upon peter the importance of the task at hand he wants to impress upon peter what his role is to be what his future's going to be simon son of john do you love me more than these these other disciples do you love me more than them and the word that jesus uses is agape Jesus uses this word of servant love, of extreme self-giving, self-sacrificial love. Simon, son of Jonah, son of John, Simon Peter, do you love me? Do you, do you love me in the way that I have loved you? And Peter does not respond with agape. He responds with philios, which is affectionate love, a different kind of, a, a, a less serious, less selfish, self-sacrificial form of love. Peter responds with, yes, Lord, I, I, I love you. It's like asking your uh, the person you're romantically interested in, do you love me? And they say, well, I really like you. And Peter, <laughs> Jesus asks this intense question, Simon Peter, do you love me? And Simon, and Peter responds, well, Lord, I, I like you, or I, I, I want to love you. 
Peter knows, knowing his own limitations, hedges his bets. He says, well, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. And Pete, and so Jesus says, probably giving him a hard look, feed my lambs. The church is about to explode. There's about to be so many people that are going to be wanting answers. There are about to be so many people who are hearing that the Son of God loves them, that they are reconciled to the God of creation, that they do not need to live in fear anymore. Are you up to this task? Feed my lambs. So he asks them again, Simon Peter, do you love me? And he asks it in that agape way. Can you love these people in the way that I loved you? And Peter, again, responds with philios, with this other uh, version of the word love that is much less serious than agape. Well, Lord, I really, I really like you. I really like these people. I want to do right by them, but love the way that you love. I don't think that's something I'm qualified for. You know my failings. That's not me. So finally, John, Jesus asks again a third time. And this time he asks not with agape love, but with philios love. Maybe Jesus is testing Peter. And Peter, for all the journey, the growth he has had on this journey, for the, the conclusion we have here, the redemption he has, Peter is still flawed. So Jesus relents and says, Peter, do you love me? Using the verb philios, philain, the conjugated version, which is, can you love me enough? Can you love these people enough? And, pa and Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Peter cannot live up to the, to the standards of, of love that Jesus shows. He cannot yet follow Jesus' example in all things. And so Jesus entrusts these things, and Jesus finally says this to him. Hearing Peter say it again, yes, I love you, Jesus says again to him, feed my sheep. The seriousness of this, of this exchange is underlined by what he says next. When you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go where you wished. When you grow old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Peter, as John intimates or implies here, is crucified himself. Peter will follow Jesus's example to the point of death, dying the same manner of death which Jesus did. Peter could have imagined that he was some kind of great leader, that he was some kind of spiritual successor to Jesus. The early church could have imagined that Peter was a spiritual successor to Jesus. That's one way the story could have been written. But Peter, as he shows again and again in our gospel narrative, is not a spiritual successor. He is simply a disciple of Jesus like the rest of us. And with Peter, we can hear this from Jesus that all these things on the outside, all the success you might have externally, it does not matter if you are not, if you do not have love for one another, and if you don't feed the lambs, tend the sheep, Take care of the people that are entrusted to you. All of it does not matter unless you are willing to follow my loving example to the very, very bitter end. This is not a path for glory. This is not a means for uh, a path towards power. The path that Jesus offers, the choice that is that Peter is given, is the path 
of discipleship, and discipleship leads to a cross. That's the message of our gospel this week. That's what Jesus is trying to tell us through Peter's, what we are being told in our gospel story through Peter's example. Um, we'll explore that more deeply on Sunday. I hope you are able to join us uh, either online or in person for worship. Have a very blessed weekend. Okay, bye-bye.